Hello friends, the Keto ND, Dr. G in the kitchen, and I have not posted a video in a very long time, and I want to show you how to make keto bread. This is a very simple recipe, probably the simplest thing that I cook that I can think of. Obviously, it requires a handful of ingredients, but it's very quick. It's a lot easier than making traditional yeast breads, and uh, you just need a few things. So, I've was reminded to do this video um, because of some reviews on some Aldi's uh, keto-friendly bread, which I doubt is keto-friendly. It's loaded with wheat and modified wheat starch, whatever that might be. Um, so anyway, a better option is to actually use whole ingredients and it's going to provide some nutritional benefit. I also have heard that that bread doesn't taste so good. So, very simple recipe. I'm going to go through it. Um, I go to almond meal, coconut flour. You can also find more <clears throat> refined almond flour. Uh, coconut flour is tricky to use, but I'll talk about that. Uh, I've used a few eggs. Uh, I've got baking powder, salt. Um, this is an option. You don't have to track this down, but guar gum uh, just a little bit helps hold it together. And uh, this is a bag of my last bit of psyllium husk powder. That's a key, uh, not only for its ability to hold the bread together and provide a non-gluten, gluten-like effect, but it also provides a great deal of good fiber. So, now the one other thing that's missing here is uh, some oil of some kind, and I either melt butter or I'll use like avocado oil and just add that in. I'm gonna do avocado because it's really quick and easy. Um, lastly, I've got the oven preheating at 375. I've got the parchment paper in my baking pan uh, dish here. So I'm gonna start with about two and a half cups of water. This is enough that I've come to realize uh, makes about one tray of, and I'm gonna make it into the sh in these rolls. So you'll see how I bake it. You could use a loaf pan but it cooks a lot quicker if you just do it in more of like a roll so it makes kind of an English muffin like uh, then I just add the um, wet ingredients so I've got the two and a half cups of water by the way I often don't measure uh, but if you're just starting out you should probably measure things uh, we've got the three eggs so obviously this is paleo uh, it is gluten-free, it's uh, keto-friendly, you name most of the low-carb diets, this will work. The um, oil, so I put all the wet ingredients in and then I kind of whisk it together to start out. I typically put about a um, quarter cup of oil, obviously it's keto, so I, be, I am pretty generous with the oil. I will link to my other videos. I have made bread recipe videos before, so this is going to be very similar to those. Um, this comes out maybe slightly different every time because I go off of memory, but you're going to get the basic proportions here. So uh, I'm going very low tech with the video here. So. Oh, and I'm measuring a little flour, but let me start whisking. First with the, uh, just get it mixed. Uh, I try to get a little air into it and I think it might help with the leavening, make a lighter bread. All right, so now we're gonna get, uh, hopefully I'm not gonna make a huge mess here. I'm doing it one handed, putting in, um, and I'm kind of adding the dry ingredients until I get the thickness of the dough, so to speak, uh, that I want. So I think it's typically gonna come out to maybe about two cups of almond meal. And then the balance will be through adding coconut flour and some psyllium husk. Now with coconut flour, you gotta be careful it is very drying and it soaks up a lot of water. It's got a lot of fiber in it. So I never go more than maybe one cup. I'm actually gonna probably stick with just about a cup here. 
just a little bit more. I don't mind it to be a little bit of that dry, it kind of holds together. Uh, but anyway, probably no more than a cup in this sort of a recipe, a cup of the coconut flour. Uh, psyllium husk. So I'm going to put typically about a quarter of a cup. Let's see if I can get the phone up here. This is from Now Foods. Uh, and I'm almost out of it in this bag, so I got to put the phone down. I'm gonna, I got a tablespoon in here. I'm going to do probably three or four tablespoons, getting close to about a quarter of a cup. In fact, that's about is what's left in the bag. I'm just dumping the rest in here. So, psyllium husk is, I think, the best addition to making breads that have some familiarity to an actual bread that you might be used to. So does have a slightly different taste texture kind of thing but now this is the guar gum you got to mix this in just a small amount uh, I'm usually only gonna put in about a quarter of a teaspoon maybe half a teaspoon help hold it together and especially don't forget the salt or you're gonna be eating what tastes like cardboard and I'm doing quite a bit I usually do about two teaspoons at least so I'm using a tablespoon here that's not full all the way up. I like a fair amount of salt. And then lastly, the baking powder. Now if you want to combine the dry ingredients in a separate container, separate bowl, kind of whisk the dry ingredients together, you might get a, just a little bit better blending. And I typically do a couple of teaspoons of baking powder. So I'm kind of eyeballing that as well. Okay, let's see. Salt's in there. I think we're good. So this is when you're going to look for the texture. Just keep mixing. The psyllium and the coconut flour is going to soak up a lot of liquid. And you have to wait a little bit. So don't, don't immediately start adding more dry ingredients or all of a sudden it's going to get super thick. And I'll show you what the consistency should look like. It should start to pull away from the sides of the bowl. So I can tell right now that we're gonna need a little bit more. Now you could use it like this. This is actually very close to what I make for pancakes and my, use it even in my waffle iron in a consistency like this. So it's more like a batter. But I'm gonna keep adding psyllium and or probably since what I have right on hand, I'm gonna add a little more coconut flour, although it's gonna run the risk of getting a little bit dry. I also switch from the whisk to a spoon. Now you could do a, use a uh, KitchenAid or a, a mixer. I do have an electric mixer, but this is so quick. I just like the exercise and I do it by hand. So I'm gonna start adding maybe quarter of a cup of flour slowly so I kind of dump there but so we're probably a little over a cup of coconut flour now I'll also link below in the description the ingredients list in the approximate amounts so you can see it's already very quickly starting to thicken so we're to the point where we don't want to add too much more dry ingredient. All right, so this could be really, depending on how pretty you want this, you can just drop this onto the pan in globs. And I sometimes, I oil, I'll put oil or butter on my hands and actually shape it. I might make these every couple of weeks, keep them in the freezer. I guess in life and in healthy eating, I don't know there's any way around uh, understanding how to cook for yourself. Voila. Preheated the oven to 375. I'm going to cook these for probably about 40, 35 to 40 minutes. Should start to get just a little bit golden brown. They cook pretty quick. All right, so 40 minutes, 375. We've got our keto buns, rolls, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we've got, looks like they've risen pretty good. First meal of the day here. So actually it's um, been out of the oven for a couple of minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and slice it um, but yeah you can see how pretty light of course you can't feel this but it's um 
you know, they're they're not going to be fluffy white dinner rolls, but uh, having grown up on homemade whole wheat bread that my dear mother made us growing up every week, uh, didn't realize how spoiled I was in that regard. In any case, so... Um, all right, so because it hasn't cooled, it's in the middle. It's it's kind of has almost a little bit of a gooey look to it. But once they cool, they're continuing to cook inside. Um, these are these are definitely done. Uh, I try to not overcook them because I'm gonna toast them after they've been put in the freezer. Like I said, they can keep in the refrigerator for uh, you know at least a few days but you probably want to freeze them if you're doing up a batch. And um, definitely slice them before you freeze them. Uh, in a Ziploc bag sliced, I can pop one out of the freezer and get it to pop apart and drop it into the toaster, toaster oven, or even I drop these into my regular bread toaster. So yeah, they uh, look no crumble, a little bit of a piece came off. So I think I struck a good balance with the coconut flour. I don't think it's too dry. Um, taking a taste test. Oh yeah, that's great. Um, if you keep like a two to one ratio with the flours, that is only about half as much coconut flour as the other flour you're using, in this case the almond flour. I ended up using two cups of almond flour and probably one and a quarter cups of coconut flour and it's beautiful oh it tastes good uh anyway that's it that's the finished product um give it a try let me know in the comments what you think and please try it out uh, i've linked some of uh, the ingredients down below uh, thumbs up is appreciated and subscribe for more content to help you get on track to a healthier life thanks for watching